pennies. Sit. We're packing up the car, driving to Dallas tomorrow, but I figured in the meantime, I'll give you guys a little tour of the backup set that I was able to put together with spare parts of the generous people of Instagram and Twitter. Let's do it. start with the clubs and then we'll get to what's in the bag, shall we? We have the putter. This is uh, actually mine. This is a backup putter I had, so I didn't actually have to worry about finding a replacement. This is a Scotty Cameron Newport 2 from, I believe, 2012. I stripped all the paint out of it, so it's just pretty much straight black. The only color in it is uh, I filled the dots in with black, kind of go along with the theme, and then my, my name is stamped into the heel and the toe in white. Black shaft, black Lampkin D-Patch grip. Really good putter, love it. Good to have a backup that you love. Um, that def definitely came in handy. Now, uh, next is uh, the towel the driver. We got a TS, TS head cover, it's a little old school, uh, but a TSI 3 head. This is an eight degree TSI 3. Really like having an eight degree instead of a nine. I had a nine degree turned up to a nine and a half, and now that I've hit an eight degree, I have no idea why I had a nine degree turned up to nine and a half. The misses, the miss is low, which is amazing. It's something I've never really had before. The shaft I had before was a Ventus Black 7X. The guys at UST were nice enough to send me a couple of this shaft here. This is the Link. Man, I, I am so bad with shaft names. It's the Link M40X 7F5. Uh, all I know is I like it. It's good. I, uh, I haven't gotten my 7X back yet. I'm gonna do some testing side by side, see which one I like better. But so far, I really, really do like this shaft. Uh, the grips, I wasn't able to get green victory grips, but I got the next best thing. V55 grips. Same print, same everything as before. Look, it performs the same, it just looks a little bit different. It's yellow instead of green. I like them, I think they're good. They don't look quite as old school and cool as the victory greens did, but these are still pretty darn good. Penny seems very interested in this. We got a TSI-3. This one is, uh, the head is actually from Mr. Tony. Uh, I, I'm not gonna say last names because I don't know if they want to be revealed, but Mr. Tony, he's from uh, California. Sent me this head, it's the 13 and a half degree TSI-3 head. I threw this in a 7X Ventus Black that was kind of like a leftover shaft I had. I was fit into the 7X and then tried out the 8X, liked it better, so I had the 7X kind of laying around. Threw this uh, lower degree head into it. It's performed pretty well. I think I'm gonna keep this for like kind of windier days, maybe days where I want like a longer option off the tee that I'm more comfortable hitting fairways with. Um, it's definitely gonna serve its purpose. I don't know if it's gonna be a staple in the bag necessarily. Five wood. T a Titleist sent me some backup heads. Uh, this is one of the heads that they sent me. This is a TSI 3 18 degree. Um, they also sent me that TSI 3 driver head and they sent me a TSI 3 three wood head, a 15 degree, but I like the way this 13.5 head performed in this shaft better than the 15 degree, so I left the 13.5 in there. Once I get an 8X Ventus shaft, I'll probably throw the 15 degree into that and then I'll have a couple different five woods or three woods that I can mess around with. As for the five wood, the uh, 18 degree five wood head in the Ventus 9X black. I know the Ventus black isn't typically supposed to be a five wood shaft, but it's the only shaft I could find that would allow me to keep a five wood in the stratosphere. It's the only, it's the only low spin enough shaft that allows me to actually play a five wood. Every other shaft was just way too spinny and it was pretty much worthless if there was any kind of wind whatsoever. This Ventus black shaft, uh, 9X in the five wood head, fantastic. Also, uh, head cover, I just kind of nab from lost and found i figured this would be the one that no one would no one would miss i don't know what brand it is it looks like a tailor-made but it doesn't have any logos on it or anything it's whatever it's old school i think it's cool i'm gonna rock with it for a little while the irons these heads this is, this is where it gets interesting the heads are from mr tony in california the shafts are half from max in jacksonville florida and the other half are from Bill. He's from Bill from Twitter. I'm actually not quite sure where he's from. Let me look that up. There's a reason I couldn't think of where Bill is from. It's because he never told me where he was from. They're all Project X 7.0s. I got two sets, um, two sets of six. So I was able to, to take like some from one set, some from the other and put together a set. Actually, I didn't do anything. My club builder, Mr. Bob Boring, put together all of these. He took all the shafts, all the heads, everything, 
Uh, I gave him all my specs and he did a really pretty phenomenal job putting together a set that very closely, if not exactly, resembles the last set that I had. And that's funny because the last set had all these weird little hunks of lead tape on them. These he was able to build through the swing weight that I ended up having them at. So they perform pretty much the same without all the, like the hunks of lead tape and crap all over them. So that's pretty cool too. The irons are pitching wedge through uh, four iron. And the only head in the bag that is not a, T a T100S from Tony in California is actually this seven iron head. This is from my coach, Randy Searing. This is his, where are you going, buddy? <laughs> You're about to knock some stuff over, I can tell. No, do you want this toy? You want this toy, buddy? There you go, there you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this seven iron head is not from Tony in California. Seven iron head is from my coach, Randy Searing. This is from his old set. I had the T100 head. I had it bent to T100S specs. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and this is gonna be close enough for now. Hey, buddy. Tony actually found the other 7-iron. He's mailing it to me right now, so I'll be able to put uh, one of the extra 7.0 shafts I have into that 7-iron, and then I'll have a full set of T100S heads. Wedges. The heads are also from Tony. These two wedges, these heads are from Tony as well. Um, Tony from California. He's got some stamping in here. I'm not quite sure what it means. We got chest high, that's interesting. I would imagine that's like a swing thought he has when he's hitting shots with his wedges. Hey, taking a liking to this old school head cover I got. It must have some, some kind of smell that he likes. Chest high, I would imagine that is his swing thought with the 54 degree wedge, MDLF, no idea. Took the shafts out of here, put in some S400s. S400 is kind of the goat wedge shaft. Same grips, same swing weights as I had before. Performed pretty much exactly the same. Um, this is the only club I had to buy. Uh, this is, this right here, Titleist wasn't able to replace any of my clubs that were stolen, um, but I was able to get a, a new SM9 Wedgeworks Low Bounce K 60 degree, and this was the only club I actually had to pay for out of the set. I had to pay to put together the clubs, and then I had to pay for this wedge, and other than that, I think so I ended up spending just, just over $500 putting together a brand new set, all thanks to the generosity of people from Instagram, Twitter, and otherwise. So thank you to everybody who helped me put together this backup set. And uh, now to address what we've learned from this experience is that it's very important to have a backup set. The only club I was able to replace quickly was the putter. And it's because I had a backup putter laying around and I, wasn't, I, I was able to kind of replace it without skipping a beat. And now that I have this backup set, if something is to happen, and not necessarily just having the club stolen, but Maybe if, I, maybe if I break a club or if um, I misplace my clubs or something, I'm only gonna be out the amount of time that it takes me to get these shipped to me or it takes me to go home and get them. All the money from the GoFundMe is going to be donated to the first tee and that is something that I am extremely proud to announce. There's obviously fees that are gonna be taken from GoFundMe, but other than that, all the money's going to the first tee. I'm still deciding on what chapter I want it to go to, but uh, some good's gonna be done with that money. And uh, making a positive out of a negative is a real thing and I'm really proud of the internet, the golf community on the internet for coming together. Hey, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I'm really proud of the golf community on the internet for coming together and, and doing some good out of something bad. Next, now that we've gotten off from the clubs, let's get to the stuff in the bag. Uh, first of all, the bag itself, um, Coach Searing, my, my golf coach, this is Randy Searing. His bag from when he coached at Kansas Wesleyan when I was playing there, this is his bag. I really like ping bags and he wasn't using this bag and he kept really good care of it, obviously. It's, you know, it's like five, six years old. Um, it's spent a lot of time in a cart, as you can probably tell from this little suntan line right there. And it's pretty much in perfect shape, and I love this bag. So I'm gonna use it until until another bag comes along. But for now, this one is this one's goaded. Old school KWU grips in this pocket here. I'm not actually, I haven't even looked through, so I don't know what's in here. You got a magnet for the back of my phone that sticks to golf clubs. Um, sticks to golf clubs really well, which I actually don't have to use anymore because of this new toy that I got from iRange Sports, which would be the next thing I show you guys. I keep it in my umbrella holder, which I will have to replace with an umbrella, I would imagine, at some point. This is a uh, stick that iRange Sports gave me. They put my name on it right there, very cool. I'll put a link to them down in the description. Thank you very much for sending me this. There's a magnet on the back of my phone that uh, sticks to this, kind of like this rangefinder does. Uh, sticks to that, and then I can film my swing that way. What I 
do is I actually kind of picked this up from Brandon Smith. Shout out B Smith to a player. I mark with a Sharpie right here exactly how tall I, I like to keep it for a stock swing video. So this is my elbow height and that marking with a Sharpie, I extend it to there, I stick it in the ground. I put my phone on it five yards down my hand path line. That way I'm taking it swing videos from the exact same angle every single day. And that's very important if you wanna be effective in your practice time and you actually wanna get something out of filming your swing. So I range sports, thank you for sending me that. I actually didn't have one of these before. So this is a, a new addition to the bag. A lot of replacements in here. Shout out to everybody who's able to replace some stuff. For instance, Perfect Practice Golf. This is the raindrop training aid. You've definitely seen it in some of my tour vlogs. In this little container, I keep the narrowest gate from the Perfect Practice gate. This here, the raindrop, is an elevated line drill that retracts and extracts like a, uh, like a tape measure. So it sets up real easy. It, it puts up real easy. The reason I keep the gate in here with this is because I usually use them in, in conjunction. This is the only, like this is great because it helps my alignment. If I were gonna only take one drill, it'd be this one because uh, being able to hit your line is of utmost importance. Now, uh, I do decade, I've been doing decade for a, for a couple weeks now. I've come around. Um, I think speed, I now think speed control is of the utmost importance because it makes the hole bigger and all that good stuff. But I will maintain that if your line control is not good, then your speed control will not be good. So this is the most important training aid a golfer can have. If your line control isn't good, you're hitting the putt with a different loft every time. You're also hitting a different line every time. Different lines require different speeds. So you gotta know what line you're hitting and you gotta know what putter you're hitting it with, which is all based on line control. So. Uh, gate trainer and raindrop. Thank you to Perfect Practice for sending me replacements. We got a uh, Flight Golf Gator. I put this over my neck. It just helps with some sun stuff here and there if I have an exceptionally sunny day and I maybe forgot sunscreen. Also in the same vein, we got some Story Eye sun sleeves. Shout out to Story Eye. These are the best sun sleeves. I've used five or six different companies. These are the best. Some sunscreen. These are just more effective at blocking the sun, but sunscreen, still gotta have it. It's still a requirement. Uh, an iPhone cord, apparently. This is USB. I almost never use a USB iPhone cord, but all golf carts use USB. So I, I just keep one in my golf bag because I never really use it anywhere else anyway. So very handy to keep in the golf bag, but really don't need it for any other part of my life. This pocket. Ooh, this one right here, you got a fake hole. This is great for practice rounds. I'll usually just throw a couple balls off to the side of the green. If there's guys in my group that want to putt and like putt two holes, I'll throw down a fake hole, chip around to it. Really good for chipping because you can short side yourself and kind of see what sides of the green aren't good. Some for practice rounds. Um, we got some Pro V1 golf balls. Pro V1 Titleist, these are the golf balls I play. Um, Eyeline Golf, I'm borrowing this from the course right now, but Eyeline Golf, please send me more of these. Mine was stolen, I don't have any more. I want to be able to give this back to my course. This is the Hank Haney Impact Alignment Aid. I use it on all my golf balls. The reason I use it is because this line looks straight from the top. I can line my face up with it real easy, face my putter. Also, it's a great framing line. If you don't have a framing line on the line that you draw on your golf balls, you are making a mistake. It makes it all, I think it makes them all look crooked. Gloves. I got the, I got some gloves in here. That's what reminded me. I, I do this monthly subscription with Red Rooster Golf and I love these gloves. They're actually like, they, they're the best gloves I've, I've used in a while. They're very much like Foot Joy Stay Softs, but for some reason I, I have an issue with Stay Softs where like the thumb gets twisted and I have the seam running down my thumb and I absolutely like just with a passion hate that. And I never get it with these gloves for some reason. I really like that. So Red Rooster Golf. <laughs> Oh, and, and on the subscription, I keep forgetting to change from the red one because the first month I got the red one and I was like, that'd be kind of cool. Have a red glove and now I have four of them. Um, so I'm probably gonna start using them in tournaments. This is a Mizuno glove. I just, I have like four of these. Mizuno makes really, really good gloves as far as like, I still get the issue with like the, the seam running up the thumb on these, which I hate, but these are really good quality gloves. I think I'm, I'm the only one that gets the seam problem in the thumb. I think I have a weird shaped hand. If you like good quality gloves, Mizuno gloves are good quality. There's not a water bottle in the water bottle pocket right now, but there almost always is. I actually got this shaker the other day for free from Sharp, because my shaker got stolen when my bag got stolen. This free shaker, because I guess they get a lot of free shakers because they order so many supplements. Um, this free shake shaker from supplementworld.com, and it says Sup World on it, in like the Supreme font, which I thought was interesting. And the yellow matches like the purple and yellow scheme. So I'd throw that in there. And then in this pocket, 
This is gonna be boring. I think there's nothing in it. I'm right, there's nothing in it. <laughs> Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Shout out to everybody who helped me put these together. Yeah, that this is this is pretty much it. The so the good news is, there's good news. My clubs were found. They were bought. A guy that buys and sells used clubs bought my set off of a guy for 500 bucks. Didn't really look at them. A couple days later, pulls the head cover off my putter, sees my name, uh, Google's my name, sees that I like sees the Golf Digest story, the videos that have been posted that everybody has been sharing. Heard a name that he recognized in one of my videos that I was talking about it uh, and got a hold of me through him. But I'm hoping I can meet up with the guy that actually found my clubs. His name's Travis Fussell. Uh, he is the owner of Machine Putters. Put all of his Instagram stuff on, on the screen right here. Go follow all these accounts. He makes some crazy custom putters. He actually mentioned wanting to uh, build a putter for me and have me into his studio to put together a putter. So I'm very excited to go do that. That will be happening in the near future. But shout out to Travis Fussell, shout out to Machine Putters, shout out to Fussell Putters. Thank you so much for finding my clubs. Thank you for getting them back to me. It really does mean a lot. <sighs> Hopefully I can get him in a video. Um, definitely gonna make a video with him at some point, getting a custom putter made. But until that point, all I can say is thank you and all I can say is go follow his accounts. Um, his putters look sick and I'm very grateful for what he did for me. So now, I'm going to uh, go to sleep, and then in the morning, I'm gonna drive down to Dallas, Texas to pick up my golf clubs. So, good night. I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go to sleep. Finn and I, I guess, are gonna hang out for a little while longer, and then I'm gonna drive to Texas to pick up my golf clubs. <laughs> you just do not make this easy on me, do you, pal? See you around. Take care of mom, will you? <laughs>have possession of the golf clubs. There's a couple small issues though. Um, I'm sure you remember me talking about wanting the build back of the original set. Well, well, the main issue is they pulled all the lead tape off of all my clubs, so I can't really match swing weight anymore and get close. Um, this wasn't a ton of lead tape. It was just like, I think it was one or two strips, but that is kind of annoying. I'm gonna have to refigure that out. Um, also, you can see, like if I show you, this is square, they, changed the settings on it for some reason. They changed the setting, not even to A1, they changed it to C2. So that's another thing we're gonna have to figure out. Decent amount of lead tape on this one that they pulled off. And they changed the setting to A1, they changed it back to standard. I can't remember what it was before. And also I don't know how much lead tape was on it before, so I'm gonna have to figure that out as well. Yeah, they pulled a bunch of lead tape off this as well. They have also pulled a massive hunk of lead tape off of this as well. And I, again, I have no idea how much was on it, but it was perfect. So I'm gonna have to go to like a Dick's or something to buy some lead tape and try to recalibrate all this. But they appear to be in pretty good shape. Whoever was using them wasn't using them too rough. Um, the best news we've gotten is that the putter is still in exquisite shape. It is almost perfect. It is perfect. It couldn't be. There was no rough housing done with this putter. I'm very glad about that. And uh, other than, you know, changing the settings on my clubs and <laughs> peeling the lead tape off, they appear to be in just as good a shape as when I left them. Definitely, definitely be worse. I'm really happy to have these back. Happy, happy day.